Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about termination of eukaryotic translation. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So translation consists of three phases. Initiation, elongation and termination. In our previous lectures, we have discussed about initiation and elongation. Today we will talk about the last part, termination. So this is the ribosome, this is the mRNA. Now there are three termination codons or stop codons in the mRNA. Those are UAG, UAA and UGA. The ribosome moves along the mRNA, scans all the codons, makes polypeptide chains and reaches at the stop codon. Once the ribosome reaches the stop codon, it might be UAG, it might be UAA or UGA. The ribosome gets the stop signal. That means it's time to finish the translation process. So the stop codon fits in the A side of the ribosome. We know that the ribosome contains three sides or three pockets A P and E. So the stop codon is in the A site now. The P site contains the tRNA which has the polypeptide chain and the E site contains the empty tRNA which doesn't have any amino acid. Now cells do not possess amino acyl tRNAs complementary to stop codons. Instead, eukaryotic release factor ERF1 binds it. RF means release factor. E means eukaryote. So the, this ERF1 comes here to bind it. And ERF1 recognizes all three termination codons UAA, UAG and UGA. Another release factor is required here that is ERF3. It is also needed to assist ERF1. So these two release factors bind the ribosome. The release factors cleave the bond between the polypeptide chain and the tRNA in the P site. Once the bond is broken, the polypeptide chain is free and it gets released from the ribosome. Once it gets released from the ribosome, the release factors are also released since they have done their role. After the release of the polypeptide chain and release factors, the ribosome is still bound to the mRNA and it is left with two uncoupled tRNAs in the P and E site. These tRNAs do not have any amino acid or polypeptide chains. They are uncoupled or uncharged. To participate in a new round of polypeptide synthesis, the tRNAs and the mRNA must be removed from the ribosome and ribosome must dissociate into its large and small subunits. Collectively, these events are referred to as ribosomal recycling. Additional release factors promote this dissociation. So additional release factors will bind here. After that, everything will be dissociated. Like these additional release factors will be released. Two uncharged tRNAs will be released. The mRNA will be released. And the small and large subunits of the ribosome will be dissociated from each other 
and they all are ready to start the next round of translation process. This is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. Thank you for watching my video.